Good morning. It's good to be with you again. It's Monday morning. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor at the Christian Churches in Iliopolis and in Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. This is an outreach effort to help folks connect with spiritual health and tools that will help them to be as healthy as possible. And I'm the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. I lost track of time, so I came running in here. I'm coming in hot this morning. So give me a minute to catch my breath. You know, I had all the time in the world. Have you ever done that? So you just do a couple things and then you realize, oh, time is out. That's me this morning. <sighs> okay. But I want to talk to you about something really significant that happened yesterday. So many of you know, many of you may not. When I was in high school, I did a song for choral contest. My nerves got the best of me. It went badly. I mean, it went badly. And I got a terrible score. And my music teacher told me, don't ever sing in front of people again. So I took that to heart. And that message has been playing in my head all of my life. Uh, I'm in a profession where there's a lot of singing. And it's, I'm always in front of people. So even though other people are singing, it's always caused me a ton of anxiety. And I've always had this chip on my shoulder because I break out in a cold sweat. I'm anxious. All of these things. So it all came to a head on Christmas Eve. Everything didn't work. None of the tech worked. I ended up having to lean, lead acapella singing. And to me, that's, that's just my nightmare coming true. So I decided I needed to do something about it. And especially since my big message is if you have something you're afraid of or something that scares you, or there's something difficult or uncomfortable in your life, don't run away from it, but lean into it. So guess what? I had to practice what I preach. So I decided to lean into it. In February, I started taking voice lessons and preparing a song that I would sing in front of people. And I did it yesterday. And it was the most freeing thing that I have done for myself. Was it perfect? A uh, no. Was it good? I don't know. I started out off key and found my way. Uh, but the point is that that's no longer the point. I did it. I did it. I did the thing that scares me. And I did it. And guess what? I don't have any emotions attached to that anymore. And not only did I do it, but I did it twice. I served two churches. And of course, the first one, the anxiety was the most high and I was very nervous. And I did start off off key, but I found my way. And it was wonderful to have that experience with people I care about and people that, um, that care about me. So yeah, it wasn't perfect. And was it good? It's probably gonna depend on you and your aesthetics, but to me, even though it wasn't perfect, it felt good to do it and to get rid of the anxiety that goes along with it. Yeah, if I did it again, I would like to be on key, you know, a little more than what I was. I found my way. I don't want it to be that it was terrible because it wasn't, it was fine. But the point is that now that's one less scary thing that I have in life. That feels good. That feels good. And my main takeaway from the whole experience is that good is good. We get uh, all caught up on per perfect and perfection. And I really think that a lot of times perfection can be a weapon that our fearful minds wield to keep us from doing scary things. You know, if I would have waited until I could have done this perfectly, it was never going to happen. It just wouldn't. Because that's probably not something I can do perfectly. But good is good. And it's done. And it's out there. So what I want to invite you to do is... Think about what you are 
doing or not doing in life because you can't do it perfectly. And I want you to ask yourself, what does good look like? Without considering perfect, what does good look like? And if you're not doing neurosurgery, if you're not blasting a rocket into space, good is probably good. It's fine. So go do it. Don't wait for perfect. Good is good. So what are my other takeaways? My other takeaways, um, the second time I did it, I did it at the second church too, and it was better there. Uh, the nerves were less. And, um, I don't know, if I did it again, it would probably be less scary. A friend of mine who, my friend Ben, who's been a tremendous support through this whole process, told me that it's like going to the gym, that when you start working a muscle, it's hard, but the more you do it, the easier it gets. So that's probably true here. But I wanted to tell you that I get how hard it is to do things that are scary. I get how hard it is to do things that you don't feel like you could ever do in front of people. And I've practiced what I preached. And I know this sounds so trite, just singing in front of people. What's well, a big deal, right? Well, to me it was because of the associations that I had been carrying around since childhood. So it made it really difficult. But we can rewrite those voices that we have in our head. We can overturn stories that we have about ourselves. If you think something about yourself and it doesn't help you, you can change that. It doesn't happen in a second. The process is simple, but it's not easy. And you know, three things I did in this process is I asked myself, is this true? Is this story true? Well, you know, maybe, maybe not. In one person's mind and authority, it was true. But there was other evidence that said otherwise. That's the second thing. Are there other perspective? Is there other evidence? And, you know, think about those things. It's so easy to do the all or nothing approach. That, that isn't always helpful. Look at the in-between things. What is, take the, do, be like the Olympic judges. Take the all or nothing and throw them out and look at all the in-between stuff. What else is there to believe and to consider about yourself? So ask yourself, is that true? Is there other information? And then what do you want? For me, what I wanted, I didn't want a singing career. I didn't want to become a performer. What I wanted was to be able to do that and not have all of the anxiety and nervous reactions when I do. Well, check that off the list. It's done. So if you're struggling with something that's difficult, don't wait for perfect. Unless you're a neurosurgeon or a rocket scientist, perfect you need to have. But don't wait for perfect, friends. Good is good. And then second, do it. Lean into it, just do it. Look at me, I did it. It wasn't perfect and I'm still alive. In fact, I'm better than what I was before. So just do it. And if you need support, find a friend who will encourage you. And that makes everything better. So start knocking those things out of your life that you're afraid of. If you need support along the way, reach out. I would love to support you. I will be your biggest fan and your biggest cheerleader. So that's my encouragement for you this Monday morning. I hope your week is fantastic. And again, my name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of two incredibly wonderful churches and the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and the podcast host, Pursuing Uncomfortable. So I can't wait to tell this story on there. I will catch you again next week. Bye for now, friends.